What's up guys, Lifting here. ExileCon is fully underway and during the event, Grinding Gear Games presented the new upcoming Path of Exile 2, a sequel to the game, and Path of Exile Mobile. And I'm going to share my opinion on this in this video. Before we start, a quick disclaimer. This will be a very opinionated video. So some of you will agree with what I have to say. Some of you will strongly disagree with what I have to say. But let's try and be civil. And uh, we can disagree without necessarily hating each other, right? I have friends I disagree with on certain topics and I think they're idiots. But they're still my bros. We're still good. Another thing is that despite some of the criticism I have to share, I want to stress that I have huge respect for GDG as a company and the people who work there. I'm not brown nosing here. I'm just simply saying it out of common courtesy to a development team that I have been following for a long time. So let's jump right into it. There's a lot to cover, but I'll focus on the most important stuff and possibly talk about the rest in a separate video. So first things first, don't be a kobold. What do I mean by that? Some of you may know how passionate and uh, tunnel visioned kobolds can get when they see something shiny. Funnily enough, that translates to a big group of people too. They see something visually appealing and they forget about everything else and completely lose perspective. Don't be like that. I think we first of all need to realize that when it comes to it, we actually don't really have that much information, relatively speaking, yet about Path of Exile 2. We have seen some Act 1 gameplay, what appears to be a redesigned character selection menu, lots of improved skill, attack and cast animations, and some changes to the skill gem system. Yet, despite that, people are already fawning over Path of Exile 2 and seem to forget that no matter how shiny the game looks, that's not what makes a great game. If that was the case, there would be several other AAA games you could play that looks better, and you could then be completely satisfied with that. And I'm not saying that the visual changes aren't good or that they won't make the game feel more enjoyable, but I honestly don't really care that much about them. What I want to see in a sequel is meaningful gameplay changes that will make me excited and want to experiment with the new system. And we really haven't seen that much of that so far, with one exception. And that's the skill gem system. And to be fair, that is a rather cool change. So the way it's presented, it tells us that we will no longer be socketing gems into our equipment, but instead a dedicated interface allows us to socket, link and upgrade our gems through that. As a matter of fact, gear will no longer have any sockets at all. My initial impression of this is that they have, <laughs> is that they have hit the nail on the head with this change. First of all, it's going to be significantly more exciting to progress your character by giving you something to look forward to when progressing your skills. And secondly, it will remove the tediousness of having to find or purchase an armor piece that matches the colors and links you need. I personally never liked that system. And I recently spoke to my brother about what it is that makes Path of Exile so confusing and sometimes frustrating for new players to get into. And one of my arguments was that the skill gem system is just too confusing and too demanding for new players that is already getting bombarded with lots of other mechanics they have to deal with. They don't know how jeweler orbs or fusings probably work. And even if they know how they work, they're afraid of spending them because they don't know their value or if the item they spent them on is valuable enough to justify the cost. Not to mention the tediousness of the gem inventory, micromanagement and so forth. So I think it's an amazing change that can drastically improve the feel of early game progression, at least. I really approve of this change. So a quick example of how this works is by socketing the proficiency gem into the new skill gem menu. This gem will cast all socketed auras linked to it. So by unlocking sockets for this setup and linking it to auras, you'll be able to cast all of these auras now. Another thing people have been pretty excited about is that you'll now also be able to shapeshift. You'll be able to change into a werewolf, a care bear or a werecat. And so the way this works is that shapeshifting essentially replace your weapon and scales with the gem level. You can turn it on and off on the fly, but besides that, we 
don't have much information to go by on this topic with the exception of knowing that the ranger is going to have an additional ascendancy called the beast master with its own new ascendancy tree progression and what this makes me hope for is that the other classes are going to have an additional ascendancy tree progression system to to allow for more diversifying of belts and and other new exciting ways to build your character so the shape shifting thing is pretty cool but it's nothing too groundbreaking let's be honest here path of exile is not exactly suffering from a lack of abilities and adding a shapeshift skill, again, while cool, unless it offers more than we currently know, probably isn't going to have that much of an impact on the overall feel of the game. But it's pretty cool, as I said. Pretty cool. Cool, cool, cool. And as you can see, the graphics have obviously also changed rather significantly. And as Chris said a few times during the gameplay showcase, they're very proud of their new lighting and grass tech. And sure, it does look nice. But let's not go all cobalt on this. Now, one thing that struck me and has been on my mind ever since I saw the video with Chris talking about designing Path of Exile to be played forever is this part. Okay, procedural level generation. This is a multi-hour talk that I'm condensing down to a few minutes. Okay, let's try to make a level in 60 seconds. So I load up the tool and I draw a line across horizontally, which is a river, and then I draw a path going downwards, which is a, the, the white path there, and then I put forest around it. And I press the button to say go, and it makes a path of exile level out of tiles. And so I say, okay, so this is a forest. I need some stuff to fill it with. So I make a set of tiles that can go in there, some trees and some fallen over trees and bandit camps and tents and some rocks, and it puts them throughout the level. And then I generate again and get a different set of stuff and again and get a different one. And the player's story is subtly different each time. And so this area feels different every time you play and did not take the artist very long to do. And then there's this part. So this is another obvious thing. If you're making a game like this as a games as a service model where you want to make content really quickly, then it's important to reuse your assets where you can. It would be criminal to make entirely new assets. The artist would be really, really, really put to a lot of work. So let's have a look at how we've done that in Path of Exile. These are the same area. On the right, we have like Calm's Lava Cave, and on the left, we have a plateau area. Now, what we did is we removed the lava and changed the environment lighting so it looks different, but the tiles are the same. I think many of the textures are the same as well. That was really fast to do. Here's another area where we took the uh, icy um, glacier area, I, no, I think this is the ascent area, and we made it yellow and took the snow away, and now we've got a desert. And so we do this extensively throughout the game. I think like Acts 6 through 10 show a lot of examples of both this and actual new assets mixed together in a way that's very hard to tell, but was actually you know, very, very cost effective at making content. Now this is why you shouldn't add a day-night cycle to your game like this. So many people make action RPGs and it's easy to add a day-night cycle. So they do, because look at how awesome it is in the trailer to have to show off the day-night cycle. But that means you're throwing away the ability to like hide versions of areas that use a different environment elsewhere in the game. As long as they're far enough away and look sufficiently different, then people will not necessarily feel when they're playing through. So first of all, I've got to say it is slightly insulting <laughs> to believe that us players won't be able to tell the difference between the same zones, but just with different shaders. It's a bit underestimating and I have to completely disagree with the notion that by simply presenting the area in a different color variation that it gives the impression of exploring a completely new area. It might give that impression the first time you experience it, but it certainly doesn't when you have done it just a few times. Another thing is that exploration in Path of Exile is pretty much completely useless. So instead, I feel like it, it just feels like a cheap solution to solve a problem that might not even be relevant. I honestly don't think that people care much about having hundreds of different maps, but with different colors and shaders. I actually think it can be detrimental to the game in the sense that it removes zone identity. When too much is randomized, you never get to know and get comfortable with an area. You never care to pick a favorite zone because they all feel rather dull and meaningless as a result of being reused all the time because we apparently need to have more than 100 maps to be able to run, where the only thing that separates them are the color difference and layout of the zone. Path of Exile lacks that epic feel to it that Diablo 2 and to a certain extent Grim Dawn have been able to create. If I think back on those games, I will easily be able to tell you what area I enjoyed playing the most purely based on the design of the zone. But 
in Path of Exile, my answer would simply be whatever map I can run the fastest. As a matter of fact, Grim Dawn doesn't even have random zones. It's the same map every time, and I can with full confidence say that I enjoyed that much more than the random zone generator that Path of Exile utilizes. So with what Chris said, and knowing that GGG's area design philosophy revolves around reskinning and reusing areas and monsters for new areas, we need to be somewhat critical of what we see because even if the zones that are presented to us in the trailer or gameplay video looks impressive at first, then how many times do you think you're going to see that area being reused for future zones or maps you might encounter further along the road? And how exciting is that going to be? Now, I could talk about this topic a lot more as I believe it is an important but often overlooked aspect to the overall quality and feel of the game, but I'll leave that for another video. And I also want to emphasize that the clips I showed that with Chris talking on this topic obviously is a boiled down version because he only had a short amount of time to cover the topic so it might sound a bit simplified and I'm sure it's much more complex than that. Regardless, the prospect of a new 7x storyline progression does sound appealing for sure, just don't be a kobold. Another topic Chris briefly mentions as they showcase the gameplay trailer is they will attempt to create more interesting monster and boss fights, like having the monsters being able to separate themselves by using different skills and thus feel different to fight relative to others. And yet to that, uh, I've got to say, I'll believe it when I see it. Because it's not the first time I've heard this. As a matter of fact, it's been said multiple times. But it just never seems to have any proper impact on the game in the long run. The only time you actually notice monsters having different abilities is either during the very early game or when fighting bosses as you progress the story, or the very, very end game bosses, of course. And I've thought about this a lot over the last few years, actually. And when I played Grim Dawn, Diablo 2, or Diablo 3 for that matter, despite its shortcomings, one thing I always enjoy is how much identity and challenge the monster variations provide in that game. You especially need to pay close attention to rare monster variations as they provide a significant challenge in the right or wrong circumstances. It, because of that, you really have to adapt to the situation, you have to use your skills at the right time, your cooldowns and whatnot. It adds difficulty to the game. That's not the case for Path of Exile, not anymore at least. The issue here is the clear speed meta of the game and, and continual power creep that has been going on. In Path of Exile you have so much damage that the only thing holding you back is how fast you can move around and finish your attack or cast animations. The monsters die instantly before they get a chance to use whatever skill they have, no matter what type of monster it is. The only time you notice a variation is when fighting monsters that have an on-death effect like the porcupine bastards or like the pre-nerfed devourers back in the day. And while those enemies can be frustrating, they also make it significantly more fun to play around because, again, you actually have to adapt to the situation. If you don't, you die. And I believe the thing that makes a game fun is overcoming challenges as opposed to presenting you with content that you can do while watching a movie on your second monitor or, or, something, you, or something you can ask your mother to do. No offense to mothers. I'm not saying that the game should provide a constant threat as the relaxed and laid back gameplay, gameplay can be very enjoyable too, but it certainly needs more challenge and meaningful encounters than it currently has so we can feel like we're constantly becoming better at the game, improving our own skills in the game. That's why a game such as Dark Souls is so very satisfying to play. It's that feel of progressing and learning something new and developing your own skills. Obviously, it's a very different game, so it can't be applied directly. But that being said, it still relies on the same core idea of it feeling rewarding to uh, develop your own skills. So because of that, I'm very glad to hear Chris saying that they'll be focusing on creating meaningful monster encounters. But I am very skeptical that it's going to happen, at least for Endgame. I still think we'll be one-shotting monsters and only be limited by the speed of our character. But I hope to be proven wrong though.
Finally, I want to express my thoughts on the Path of Exile mobile game that's going to be released. And yes, that is uh, not a joke. They are making a mobile version, which in all honesty, I kind of had expected to happen. I'm sure a lot of you guys did too. That's just how the market is, right? First of all, we can probably all agree that GGG really knows when and how to present such an idea. They know that it's not what their existing player base really wants, so they make sure to announce something as hyperbolic as Path of Exile 2 alongside the new Challenge League. This is a great way of controlling the situation and works as an excellent harm reduction strategy. When the Diablo 3 developers presented the idea of Diablo 3 Mobile, I think they were very well aware that it wouldn't prove popular amongst their player base. So why did they do it? Well, probably not because they enjoyed being booed off stage, but because the people who had done the profit calculations realized that the potential amount of lost customers and negative reactions they would gain or lose by presenting Diablo 3 Mobile well, that was going to be dwarfed by the amount of money they can make on the mobile version. Now, I don't think they were expecting as big of a backlash as they received, but I am definitely confident they knew what they were doing in the grand scheme of things. I mean, who here doesn't think that Diablo 3 is going to turn a huge profit, the mobile version that is, I mean. Now, GGG, however, has managed to come out of this situation a lot more elegantly by offering something grand in return, Path of Exile 2, a new challenge league, the first ever Exile Con, and so forth. And it's of course also worth mentioning here that just due to their reputation and how they've handled uh, developing the games in the past, they have a lot more trust than Blizzard had when they released the Diablo Mobile news. But again, just keep in mind, we actually haven't seen much of Path of Exile 2 yet. And while some of it does look great i personally don't think it looks that different yet the gameplay i have seen thus far looks pretty much identical to the current system just better looking and obviously this might change as we get more information but again don't be a kobold right just because it looks shiny and new if it in reality thus far isn't that different from what we already have then you know Stick to what we know and what we see instead of what you think might come true until we see it right. Another concern here in regards to the mobile stuff is how much the mobile game development is going to influence the future development of the desktop and console version of the game. So try and think about this. If you're a company and you have two products, product A, Path of Exile 2 on desktop and console as we kind of know it, and Product B, which is Path of Exile Mobile. Product A has the potential to bring in $50 million a year in profit. Product B has the potential to generate $1 billion a year. Which game do you think will receive the most attention and development funds? And I've heard people say that this is an invalid argument as there will be two separate development teams and they're not going to influence one another. However, that to me at least seems like a rather shallow argument considering it's still run by one company, right? And that company decides on which departments receive funds. And again, which one do you think will receive the most funds and attention? The one that gives $50 million a year or the one that gives a billion? Also remember that Tencent has a majority share in Grinding Gear games and they have been hugely successful in the mobile gaming department. As far as I know, they're amongst the most profitable companies in the world because of this. So they obviously want to push that agenda to a higher extent if it will make them more money. So when we, so when we talk about this, the concern is that while the two games will be developed differently, by different teams, they still need to remain somewhat true to one another. And the potential risk with this is that the limitations of a mobile game can potentially, to an extent at least, dictate what can be developed for the PC game. Now that said, I'm sure the mobile game will be great as it is developed by a very competent team. So if you like mobile games, then this is great. If you don't think you'll be playing the mobile version, then yeah, it's a little more questionable. And guys, I'm not trying to be overly critical here. As a matter of fact, I really hate when YouTubers do that. And many do it because, 
they know it generates views, it's drama, right? I just feel like I have an obligation towards the people who subscribe to my channel to give them my honest thoughts and impressions uh, on the matter, as opposed to neglecting some of the obvious issues that I think needs to be mentioned or talked about. As I said, I have a ton of respect for GGG and the people working there, and I don't think there is a company that can do this better in any way. But that doesn't mean as a consumer of their product that I shouldn't voice my concerns if I believe them to be true. I really don't like complaining. I really don't. And that's why I rarely make these types of videos. I just think that so far, what we have been presented with, besides the skill gem system, are just some significant graphic improvements. But I think I speak for most people when I say that it isn't how beautiful the game looks that makes us play the game. It's the deep and complex gameplay system that Path of Exile is so famously known for. Now, a few closing comments before we end. Chris stated that there is going to be at least four more new challenge leagues before Path of Exile 2.0. And we also know that you will keep your MTX, such as uh, stash tabs and so forth. You don't have to repurchase them again for Path of Exile 2.0 if you'll be playing that. So with that said, I hope everything didn't come off as being too negative because I actually am genuinely excited about the prospect of a sequel to Path of Exile. I just feel like what we have seen so far looks a bit more like a Path of Exile uh, reborn or remastered type of thing. But we also still have a lot to see and I'm looking forward to that. I also hope that the concerns I've expressed in this video will be proven wrong. I don't care about being right. I just care about getting the best game possible. And I hope that despite some of you disagreeing with what I said in this video, that we're still on good terms despite different opinions. If not, well, then you're probably a cobalt. Thank you for watching. And bros, do you even nerd?